Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Tuesday, June 25th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, Missouri conservationists have tried for years to increase the state's alligator gar population. That's one of the largest and oldest fish species in North America. While they might seem threatening to some, scientists say the ancient predators help keep the big rivers healthy. Some states, that's the main reason they're stocking alligator gar. It's in hopes that they could potentially bring a balance to some of the exotics that are within the system. St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen tells us about the state's effort to increase the number of alligator gar. First, the news. Planned Parenthood has until Friday to convince a state commission that it should continue to provide abortions in Missouri. Circuit Court Judge Michael Stelzer has extended the deadline of an injunction on the St. Louis Clinic's license. Now, the organization has just a few days to appeal to Missouri's Administrative Hearing Commission, which resolves disputes between state regulators and private entities. Planned Parenthood Vice President Angie Postal. We're going to continue this fight to make sure abortion stays legal in Missouri, and that means any means necessary. The Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services has denied a license for the state's only abortion provider due to patient safety concerns. Two Missouri law firms are filing a potential class action lawsuit against Bayer. The case accuses the company of violating state law in not disclosing the health risks linked to the weed killer Roundup. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports the lawsuit is different from others because it seeks refunds, not injury compensation. The lawsuit alleges Bayer violated state law by not disclosing exposure to Roundup can increase the risk of cancer. A California couple won a $2 billion judgment from Bayer in May after claiming Roundup gave them cancer. Bayer is appealing that ruling. Don Downing is a St. Louis lawyer who's part of the new filing. He says the Missouri case is a lot different. Specifically excluded from our class are people who have claims for personal injury, uh, meaning cancer, uh, th- those sorts of claims. This is an economic loss class only. Downing says the lawsuit seeks unspecified punitive damages. Bear declined to comment, saying it had not yet seen the filing. I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. Investigators say a 26-year-old man with a lengthy criminal history in North Carolina has confessed to the shooting death of a North County Police Cooperative officer. Bonet Meeks is facing several charges, including one count of first-degree murder. Officer Michael Langstorth was killed in the line of duty over the weekend while responding to a call about a person trying to cash a bad check at a market in Wellston. He had been with the department for three months, but spent more than 15 years with the St. Louis Police Department. Cooperative Chief John Buchanan remembers Langstorff as a, quote, outstanding officer and a mentor to younger members of the department. Wildlife scientists in Missouri are trying to save the alligator gar, one of the largest and most feared fish species in North America. Missouri's population has declined over the last century, largely because man-made changes to the Mississippi River have kept the fish from reaching spawning grounds. St. Louis Public Radio's Eli Chen reports on the state's efforts to raise alligator gar numbers. On a bright, humid day in Cape Girardeau, two scientists are standing on the edge of a motorboat, pulling long fishing nets from the middle of a lake next to a cement plant. Sanduba De Silva, a research assistant at the Missouri Department of Conservation, points out a long tank they have prepared in case they catch a large fish. So if we do catch uh, alligator gar, we can put them in this tank that makes sure the fish are stable and comfortable so that we can collect the data from them and then put them back in the water. Alligator gar look like alligators, but instead of legs, they have fins. And the adults can be massive, gargantuan, one might even say. The largest cod in Missouri was 6.9 feet long and 127 pounds. Because of its size and appearance, a lot of people have become afraid of the species, as you can hear in an episode of the Discovery Channel show, River Monsters. In the deep south, a monster is accused of a series of violent attacks. 
a creature as deadly as a shark and as big as a gator is blamed. While people might find the alligator gar threatening, in some ways the gar are much more threatened by humans. Salvador Mondragon is a fisheries management biologist at the Missouri Department of Conservation. He says Missouri has one of the lowest populations of the species in the country. Human interaction has definitely had an effect, you know, with the uh, building levees along the Mississippi River and channelizing rivers. Alligator gar need to be able to swim to swamps and areas in the floodplain. Solomon David is an aquatic ecologist at Nichols State University in Louisiana. He says levees and dams have blocked the species from reaching their habitat. We've really altered the natural patterns of how some of these large river systems work and therefore prevent some of these species from accessing spawning grounds that they need in order to reproduce. Alligator gar require very specific conditions to spawn. The ideal time to spawn is in May and June when the temperatures are warm enough. There needs to be a flood so that the fish will seek out shallow areas around the floodplain to lay eggs on aquatic plants. And the water needs to stay high so that the eggs develop properly. Conservation scientists started bringing up alligator gar from the south to parts of Missouri in 2007. David says research shows that predators like alligator gar are necessary to maintain balance in the river ecosystem. Because if you have too many, let's say, prey fish or prey items, they can sometimes overpopulate and then you might end up with disease, you might end up with stunted populations, um, whereas the predators help maintain that balance. The alligator gar also have a way of cleaning up the environment. Mondragon says the species prey on weak fish and invasive species like Asian carp. Some states, that's the main reason they're stocking alligator gar. It's in hopes that they could potentially bring a balance to some of the exotics that are within the system. Mondragon has tried twice to get the fish on Missouri's endangered species list. That would require bow fishermen to report any alligator gar they catch. His efforts haven't succeeded, and that's because sportsmen argue that when alligator gar are young and small, they look like other fish, even to the trained fisherman's eye. But Mondragon doesn't think that reasoning has a lot of weight. Whenever you're duck hunting, you have to be able to identify the species of duck before you shoot it. Why shouldn't it be the same for an alligator gar whenever you're harvesting alligator gar? And other states like Texas have regulations that have successfully protected alligator gar. Mondragon says that in the last 10 years, he's catching more and bigger alligator gar. Some fish that we believe are fish that we did not stock, so we're thinking that the ones we did stock are actually getting an opportunity to spawn. To find out if that's true, researchers are analyzing genetic samples from the alligator gar that have been caught recently. So in a few months, they'll be able to say if more of these river giants are lurking in Missouri waters. I'm Eli Chen, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Shula Newman edited that report. Shula is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. That means she's the boss. <laughs> Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. Shula's great. I'm just messing around. I'm Wayne Pratt. And from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.